there are two very special types of dynamical systems that have very special types of behaviors when it comes to periodic orbits. These are, respectively, gradient and Hamiltonian systems. Now, this is a big story. This could go on for a long time. We're just going to tell a little piece of this. We're going to focus on continuous time and look at gradient and Hamiltonian dynamics on the plane. A gradient field or a gradient dynamical system is something of the form dx equals minus grad phi of x, where phi is going to be some scalar field on the plane. So that field tells you exactly where you're going by means of a gradient. In contrast, a Hamiltonian system, a thing that we have talked about before, is of the form dx equals minus j grad phi, where j is the two by two rotation matrix that twists that gradient field by 90 degrees counterclockwise. There's a really tight relationship between gradient and Hamiltonian systems, a relationship that you almost might call dual. They're orthogonal to one another. And that says a lot about the behavior of the dynamics. When it comes to gradient fields, they are particularly simple when it comes to periodic orbits. There are none. There are no periodic orbits. Lemma, if you have a gradient field, dx equals minus grad phi, as long as phi is, let's say, continuously differentiable, not locally constant, then there are no periodic orbits except for equilibria. And even those are constrained. Here's a proof. If you take the derivative of phi along a solution x of t with respect to time, then the chain rule says that this is what? This is the gradient of phi dotted with dx dt. But dx dt is minus grad phi, so that's minus grad phi dot grad phi. That's minus the length of phi squared, which is going to be strictly negative, or maybe equal to zero at an equilibrium. And those equilibria are going to occur precisely at the critical points of phi. That's it. That's really simple. In contrast, when you're looking at a Hamiltonian field on the plane, then with the same hypotheses about it being locally non-constant, etc., then the orbits of your Hamiltonian system lie on the level sets of phi. Now, we've actually seen this before. We've done this proof before. Here's a slightly different approach to it. If I, again, take the derivative with respect to time of phi along a solution, then I get grad phi dotted with dx dt, and that is grad phi dotted with grad phi, but with a twist applied, something that rotates it by 90 degrees. Of course, that dot product is zero because those vectors are orthogonal. That is basically the same proof that we did in a previous chapter where we wrote things out explicitly in terms of components. But what this really means is that all of your level sets, well, lots of them are going to be simple closed curves and hence periodic orbits. In fact, in this Hamiltonian case, either your orbit is going to an equilibrium or you're running off to infinity or you have this bounded closed orbit. You're on a periodic orbit. They tend to be all over the place. You can really see the duality between gradient and Hamiltonian fields in terms of your function phi and its level sets. In the case of a Hamiltonian field, you're running around and around and around on these level sets, but that's really a twisted gradient. If you rotate things by 90 degrees, then you're just flowing along the gradient. You are decreasing your phi value as quickly as possible. And that's why you don't have any periodic orbits in the case of a gradient field. And now the question that we haven't answered is, how do you know when you have a gradient field or a Hamiltonian field? How can you tell? Well, in 2D, continuous time on the entire plane, there is one tool that you have at your disposal. This is something that you may have seen back in multivariable calculus. It has to do with grad and curl and div and all that stuff. Here's the lemma. A smooth vector field on the plane is a gradient field if and only if its curl identically vanishes. It's everywhere zero. 
and it's a Hamiltonian vector field if and only if the divergence is zero everywhere. Now this seems a, a little bit like a coincidence. What's going on here? This is actually a reflection of a much deeper result, something called the Poincaré lemma. Very, very nice. You might find this to be a useful criterion for knowing when to look for such a fee. Now this is all cool, this is wonderful, but it only works in continuous time and on the plane. Is there anything that works in discrete time? Well, for gradient systems, yes, there's a lot that you can do, but we're not going to talk about it. For Hamiltonian systems, well, that one is particularly complicated. There's a lot of really great dynamical systems associated with Hamiltonian discrete time systems, but that is not part of our story. There is so much more that we could say about this, but no, not in this volume. But it's good to know that there's more out there to learn.